the employment rates back here it's yeah it's not easy <laughs> you need to know your stuff okay you you actually need to know your stuff i did not have any connections i did not yeah i know a lot of people thought oh she probably had connections i did not <laughs> and this is one thing i will tell my nieces and my nephews and even something i'll encourage for my own kids how do you balance your pharmacy career with building your personal brand and business like skincare it's heels in the building Sit down, relax, baby, let me take you on a ride Sit down, relax, baby, let me take you on a ride yeah, yeah. Welcome to my roller coaster Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time watching me, my name is Sipo Sami or Sami if you would like. And if you're a returning subscriber, hey, thank you so much for coming back. So in today's video, I'm going to be answering some questions that you guys had regarding practicing pharmacy or life as a pharmacist or just any pharmacy related questions that you have. So for those of you who are watching me for the first time, I am a qualified, registered and practicing pharmacist. I did my degree in China and then I moved back home to Zimbabwe where I am currently based and where I'm currently practicing. So I know a lot of my viewers are based abroad and some of you guys may be watching me and be considering going out there to study pharmacy and you have questions on how that process is and especially coming back to Zimbabwe to practice and just everything that is involved with you know converting your foreign degree so that you may be able to use it and practice it here in Zimbabwe and so yeah those are the questions I will be answering today if it's your first time on this channel do make sure you hit that subscribe button please subscribe to the YouTube channel guys a lot goes on here we do vlogs we do chit chats we do all the cool and fun stuff and you do not want to miss that so hit that subscribe button click the little bell right next so that you get a notification every time i post and without further ado guys let's get straight into today's video so the first question is how long did it take you to complete your pharmacy degree in china so it took four years yes it's a four-year degree program i know here in zimbabwe it should be five and i think that five includes like an internship year in china it was a bit different there's no dedicated like year to do your internship um all the experience that you get you get it through your you know the four years that you do you have like many attachments to those four years and you graduate and get your degree after four years and that's what i did why did you choose to study pharmacy in china and honestly guys i yeah that was not a decision that i made from the jump i actually wanted to study medicine and yeah growing up i my family members called me doc i just always wanted to be a doctor and yeah that's what i wanted but you know life lives and life life okay things didn't go the way i actually planned for them too. I wanted to go study in the States. So I was going to do like my first four years and then, you know, pre-med and then obviously go into med school, but things didn't quite work out the way I hoped they would. And so after high school, I actually took a gap year when, you know, my things were not really aligning. I took a gap year and I just considered my options. I considered going to South Africa, but by the time I decided to, because South Africa school year starts in January, and you know, I'd already missed the first year, you know, and then I took a gap year. My mom's friend had a son who was in China and he seemed to be doing quite, you know, all right. And he told me about, you know, studying in China. And to be honest, at first I was very skeptical. And those of you who know, if you know, you know, when we were in high school, there was this, you know, misconception that like, you know, China could not work for you. And, and so for me, I was a bit, uh, you know, hesitant because I was skeptical about the kind of education that people would get in China. But yeah, I considered the option and, you know, this guy helped me apply. And that's how I found, I obviously searched for the best pharmacy schools in China. Some of them were so expensive, so I certainly couldn't afford them. Um, and then some of them actually only taught the program in 
Chinese and I studied my degree in English. I know that was also one of the questions whether I studied in Chinese or in, in English and I studied my degree in English. So yeah, I actually went and I searched for the best schools that offer, you know, the pharmacy degree in English and pharmacy was like the next best thing after medicine. Well, so I thought and yeah, that's how I ended up going into pharmacy and most of all going to China to study pharmacy. What was the process of registering with the Pharmacist Council of Zimbabwe after returning from China? Okay, so the first step that you have to take is taking what is called the forensics exam. So that exam is given by the Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe, and that is the regulatory board here in Zim. So the two main boards that you're gonna be dealing with are the MCAZ and the PCZ, that's the Pharmacist Council of Zimbabwe. So you take the forensics exam. I took mine just after graduating. I was still in China. I actually did that exam online, but yeah, essentially you take the forensic exam first. And then once you pass, you then go to the pharmacist council of Zim where you register for you to do your pre-reg training. So your pre-reg training is a one year program where you are an intern, either in retail or in hospital. So you find what is called the supervisor at whatever institute you choose, either in retail or in hospital, and your supervisor will then be your mentor. And during that one year, um, you also have to do other rotations. So if you're in retail, you need to do a hospital rotation and an industrial rotation. If you're in, in hospital, you need to do a retail and industrial. But what you cannot do though, is you cannot be in, Industri in industrial pharmacy for like the whole year and then do these other two as your rotations. So you need to be attached for at least six months at one of these. And there's also academia, which is the route that I went actually for the first six months I was in academia. So yeah, that's why now I work in research, but yeah. So you choose what institute you want to do it at and you need to make sure that the pharmacy that you choose to do your internship um, at is registered to take pre-registration students. So you find that like when I moved, there were so many new pharmacies in Harare guys, like there was just this pharmacy boom. There is like a pharmacy in every corner of town. <laughs> and because most of them had recently been opened, they're not registered to be able to house pre-registration students. So a pharmacy that can house pre-reg students has to have been open for about two years. And then obviously the supervising pharmacist also needs to be registered to be able to supervise you as a pre-reg student. So yeah, once you then find your supervisor, you then apply to PCZ and you tell them, hey, you know, these are my forensic exam uh, results. And now I'm ready to do my pre-reg and this is the pharmacy that I want to do my attachment at, and this is my supervisor. You pay a fee and then once you get approved, then you start. So after the first three months, you take the first exam. So that's the first board exam that you take. When you pass it, you then go on to do the rest of the, you do nine months and then you take another exam. And then afterwards, if you pass, you then become licensed. Were they difficult? 50, 50, you need to know your stuff, okay? You, you actually need to know your stuff, but there's a lot of resources. There's like past papers and most of it is like multiple choice. And yeah, there is quite a lot of, you know, help that you can get regarding the board exams. So it's not too difficult, trust me. <laughs> how easy was it to find a pre-reg placement and how was your experience overall? Whew. And I know a lot of people who consider coming back have this question, like how easy is it? You guys know the employment rates back here. It's yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> and for me, to be honest, it wasn't as easy but I feel like it could have been worse. When I got back, I did not actually plan, you know, it was not part of the plan to actually do this. And so I had not planned ahead. I didn't know where or how things were gonna happen. But yeah, I did not have any connections. I did not, yeah, I know a lot of people thought, oh, she probably had connections. I did not, <laughs> okay? So I looked for an internship for like three, four months and did not succeed okay there were a lot of pharmacies that i went to and i you know 
tried to ask for an internship, but either they were not registered to have pre-reg students. So like there were no supervising pharmacists for pre-reg students, or they already had their students, you know, from the UZ and yeah, it was, it was not easy. So at some point I actually gave up and ended up attaching myself to an institute that's called DATIS, Drug and Toxicology Information Services. Um, this is under UZ at PARI and it's more of academia, right? So again, something I did not even expect. <laughs> My plan was actually just to start. And I think that's the advice I'm going to give to you. If you can, if you come and you look for an internship and you're not actually winning, like if you're not getting anything in retail or hospital or industrial, go to Dartis guys, go to Dartis because that is a good start for you. And at least you're actually putting in the time, you know, into your one year period. It's better than just sitting at home and telling yourself you can't find anything. And I was just really fortunate enough that when I got to Dartis, my supervisor managed to link me up with Kenling Pharmacies, which is where I was then attached to for the rest of my internship. And so that's how I got into the retail space. So I did my internship at Kenlink and honestly, Guys, I learned so much. I learned so much. My supervisor, Mrs. Dudia, she is amazing. She's a wonderful teacher. She was really tough. Like she's a tough lady, but I really appreciate it because it's exactly what I needed. So like, you know, she, you learn everything. It's like going back to school again because, you know, she would force you to open those books and you need to know your chemistry your mechanism of action before you dispense a drug you need to know what that's going to do to the patient any you know adverse reactions or you know all of that you needed to know your stuff and i really really appreciated that so yeah i did my retail experience uh, at Kenlink and then I did my hospital rotation at the Avenues clinic for a week and my industrial rotation at Pharma Nova and their manufacturing company also for a week. So those were the rotations that I did and the experience that I got. How did you get into clinical research and do you enjoy it over retail? Oh my gosh, my favorite question. <laughs> but guys, I love my job, okay? It is literally my dream job. So I think from my previous question, I did tell you guys about how I did my period training at Kenlink. However, when I finished, guys, I, I would have loved to stay at Kenlink. I, my experience at Kenlink was really, really great, um, especially because of how much I learned and just, you know, yeah, I really loved it there. The only problem though was that at the time when I finished, it didn't really have space for me, but yeah, my supervisor, Mrs. Dudia, she was very supportive in terms of just like supporting my next step and, you know, with whatever I wanted to do next. Um, she did write like a great recommendation for me and all. And after that, I moved to another retail spot for a pharmacy that I will not be mentioning. Um, but yeah, so I was in the retail space for quite a bit, not too long though, but just that small period of time made me realize how much i actually didn't really enjoy re uh, retail especially in them there was just a lot of i don't know how to put it but like maybe in just like a quick summary a lot of things here are centered on more on making money targets and you know sales a lot more than actual like patient safety and for me that was a big conflict of you know integrity i guess yeah and so that experience after kindling was not the greatest for me it was a very horrible experience and it just so happened that this job opportunity for the current job that i work at right now the clinical research job I, I saw the ad and i did apply to be very honest i did not think i qualified because even the people that i was applying with the people in the in the pool they had more experience than me and they just seemed you know to have their stuff together and then there was just me but you know god qualifies then qualified and child i got that job and honestly it is my dream job because for me, I think the other thing with retail that I did not enjoy was it's very mundane. So it's the same kind of thing. 
and it's fine for a bit but like i could not see myself doing that for the rest of my life whereas with clinical research it's a lot of it's very dynamic you know you're working on different trials you're working with a team you're you know besides the fact that i love the fact that it's an office job but like there's a lot of my mind is constantly stimulated because you're reading a lot and you know you're working with people in you know the regulatory board so i work a lot with mcaz and just like the whole research team it's just so dynamic and just you learn so much i feel like i am contributing a lot more to the health industry than i was with retail. i don't know if that makes sense obviously with retail you're helping patients face to face type of thing but in like research i feel like i am putting in more to the bigger picture. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, that's how I actually got <laughs> the job that I have now. Literally the ad came out and my cousin just forwarded it to the family group. And I was like, Hey, you know, and this is at the peak of things just not going well at the other job that I was at. And I just prayed about it honestly. And I just put in my everything at the time I was just applying everywhere, but like, I did not even know that this particular, you know, job existed. And especially in Zim, I did not think clinical research was a thing in Zim. And to be honest, it's not, it's a very, very small industry. I think currently there's only about two or three um, institutes besides you know the big government ones that are doing research and with my organization it's mostly American funded like we have a lot of like um, uh, connections with some big American boards so yeah that's how I got into clinical research guys and honestly love 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 it would you recommend studying abroad and coming back even if it's not for medicine absolutely 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 and this is one thing i will tell my nieces and my nephews and even something i'll encourage for my own kids going to study abroad isn't just about the education or whatever it's just the exposure of being out there you learn so much and it helps you especially when you come back you come back with a more open mind because you've been exposed you know to a more functional economy more functional systems i think you just it just puts you in a better place in terms of how you think and how you fare you know in life and 100 percent, i would totally recommend. if you have the opportunity to study abroad please take it grab it and run do you plan on furthering your education or specializing in any pharmacy fields yes i actually do i want to pursue a master's um i'm not sure which one yet but i definitely would love to just you know have more than just the pharmacy degree and especially in the field that i'm working in now in the research space and clinical trial space you need more than just your pharmacy degree and especially if you want to grow another thing that i found very limiting in retail was that there was no growth literally you're an intern and then you're a pharmacist the highest you can ever be is the supervising pharmacist and that's it otherwise you just have to open your own retail that's it like that's the ceiling there's no growing outside of that as opposed to to research you know there's just more out there and, and it's, it's a bigger space so like with research and even in manufacturing so like pharmacists to work in manufacturing big pharma you know there's just more there than than retail and certainly um, I'm still making up my mind, but definitely end of this year or certainly by next year, I should have enrolled into, you know, a further educational degree in my master's or whatever. But yeah, certainly. Okay. The last question, how do you balance your pharmacy career with building your personal brand and business like skincare? I get this question a lot and honestly, yeah, it's i don't know guys you just make time find a way to just like have everything come together it's not easy i know it is not easy but just somehow find a way to just balance it anyway thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video i hope i have answered these questions uh to your satisfaction if you still have more questions please do not hesitate to drop them in the comment section below i'm sure the other viewers who may be in the same field can also chime in let's keep the conversation going thank you so much for watching i love you guys and i will see you in my next video bye